But, uh, <laughs> and I understand, you know, y'all have, especially holidays, the majority of this congregation is not from Texas. You know, we have probably 10% of this congregation are native Texans. So when holidays and stuff comes, you have to miss and all things. I, I totally understand that. Amen. 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 So I, I get that. You want to see. And I encourage you to go see your mamas, your daddies, all of that. Let them know that the cult ain't killed you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> that we're fine. Amen. Let them know that the tornado that they saw on the news that supposedly leveled the entire state. Amen. That tornado, it stayed in Saginaw. Those of you that live over there, I tell Julian all the time, they, the weather has a house out in Haslett. Haslett. He has a house out there. And so whenever he argue with his wife, he just go to tan stuff up. And it spreads to Saginaw and Azel and all them other places. <laughs> That's where the weather lives. But yeah, but when something happened, a school shooting, you know, they think the, all the schools got shot at, in Texas. They make Texas look so bad. I even had a preacher one time send me the report that they showed about Texas. I mean, it looked like <laughs> the whole state was leveled. Like they have destroyed, especially it, that was during the ice storm. They made it look like everybody was starving. There was no running water. We had started eating humans to survive. They made it look like the ice age with that little rat running around with the acorn. What is that thing? Saber tooth rat? What was that? A saber tooth weasel? What was he? It was a squirrel? Ain't no Scott now. I've lived a long time and I ain't never seen no squirrel looking like that. If a squirrel looking like that around my house, I'm going to have to get the 12 gauge. But anyway, <laughs> how did I go so far away? Ordinances. Adminbeliever.com forward slash ordinances dot P D F. One of the things that the devil hates most about the church is God's order in the church. How many of y'all know that to be true? He hates God's order in the church. The world wants you to think that no man should be governing you spiritually. They want you to think that it's a bad thing to let a man administer the word of God and pastor you. Yeah, they say there's something wrong with that. Why can't you just pastor? Why, why can't you get it for yourself? And they go against God's order. And that same disobedience is spreading even through schools. I saw a teacher talking. She says she teaches 11 and 12 year olds. I don't know what grade that is. But she don't want to teach no more because they come in there and tell her, you can't teach me that. Assuming authority because they don't have authority at home. They don't have authority at home because their parents don't have authority in the church. See, back when folks grew up in church, authority was understood. Teachers wasn't quitting because students were bad. They weren't. Teachers wasn't taking meds and drugs and stuff to put up with children. Because the parents would beat their tails at home. Amen. Beat their tails. But in order to beat somebody's tail, you have to be their authority. These kids now will take the belt from you and hit you with it. Oh, oh, I just felt something. Oh, that just... Ooh. Felt the, felt the spirit of Marvin Gaye's daddy. Mm. <laughs> I 
<laughs> but <laughs> the th yeah, but because order, it takes order, and it takes God's order. Isn't it funny how the majority of this nation has conservative values? Did you know that? The majority of this nation has conservative values, but the nation is going to hell under democratic values. Democratic values are taking over everything even though they're the minority. You know why that is? Because you can't teach God's morality without God. The Bible said that they would have a form of godliness. That's conservatism. But denying the power, that's God. So you can't get on a platform and talk about what is morally right if you're not produce, uh, promoting the source of morality. God is the source of morality. So you can't delete Jesus and preach his values then you don't have any power. The world will win because only Christ has overcome the world. He said, I have overcome the world. So you can't teach his values without him or you're going to lose. Folks send me that all day long. Watch this dude. He be killing the, the LGBT. Watch this dude. He be killing the woke folks. He killed the woke agenda. He killed the critical race theory. He, he kills the critical. Watch this. Watch this. If he ain't talking about Jesus, I don't need to watch it. Because he didn't kill it. He may have slapped it, but it's going to get mad and whip him. Because if you don't have the power of the Holy Ghost behind it, you won't win. Because only Christ has overcome the world. That's how the woke stuff started in the first place. Everything became woke because they tried to take what is positive and extract it from Christ and Christianity. Oh, if you ain't standing for Christ, you ain't standing for nothing. You think the devil is scared of good morality? He had to do that in heaven. He had to act good in heaven. So he ain't afraid of it. He stood toe to toe and debated Jesus. Or at least attempted to. But Jesus kept saying, get behind me. Why he kept saying, get behind me? Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. Get behind me. So if you're not preaching Jesus, man, don't come showing me no video about some old woke dude challenging this and that smoking a blunt and seashells in his head <laughs> and I just found out this seashell stuff y'all better quit putting them things in y'all head that's from mommy water I had an African man when I put that African spirit thing up boy I have had Africans telling me stuff that I did not I want to shoot the video again Telling me how Mommy Wata has infused itself in our society. And so I was at Papa Do's yesterday just eating at the bar, eating by myself. Don't go Saturday around <laughs> one o'clock. That's the ratchet time. <laughs> Food change. They bring out neck bones and stuff. <laughs> don't, 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 don't eat there. And I mean, it was so ratchet in there. It was just ratchet hood ratchetness. Just folk cussing loud. All the men in there had do-rags and long hair. All of them. I was looking, I was like, is there a man that has cut his hair before? And there's not. Not in there. And all the women had seashells and junk in their hair and were ruling over a man. So there was always this old dude weak and then his wife leading him around making him do stuff and making him pay i'm not paying for that so i'm sitting there looking around 
firing off to a couple of my brothers because I got to tell them. I'm just like, y'all, this is. But I'm just observing. And it's sad to see the emasculation of the American male. It was sad to see it from that standpoint because I was sitting where I could see everybody. And I did not see a strong man in there. Not a strong black one. And all the women were just running everything. They the loudest ones. They just, uh, and then the ones that didn't have a man they were ruling over, they had a little dyke thing that they was ruling over. And, they, and so now you done got the stud and the, it just, I said, boy, black people. My people, my people. It was sad. So I'm sitting there, they asked me my name. I said, it's G. Manager knows me, so the manager like, yeah, yeah, so we're going to make sure we bring you your food out uh, early, whatever, whatever. So I'm sitting there. Somebody come behind me and said, G. I look back. <laughs> this dude <laughs> had my food, Herman. He about six foot four. Afro. Big afro, but it was neat, you know, just a neat afro, like, like yours, but it's it real neat. This was, this was gay neat. You, you can't reach this level of neatness, yeah? This, this is not a hair out of place, not one. And he had it just neat. Had the little beard just trimmed, neat, full beard. Eyeliner, eyeshadow, foundation, and lipstick. A grown man. I turn around, I looked at him. I said, boy, if you don't give me my fish and get choked. Yeah, because he's mentally ill. He's mentally ill. And I'm looking at him, how you get a job? Like, why are you working here? Fully made up, but he had the big afro. Bell bottoms and all that. He's like that dude from the Proud family. What's the uncle name? That be singing, y'all, oh, y'all, y'all, y'all. He looked like that. But full makeup, lipstick, art, everything. Here your food, y'all. I said, man, what? is going on why is he out in public like that and then the thing that almost made me start crying was that's somebody's son now he probably when guys do that they really never know their father so he probably never know who his father was when they act like that that i mean that's looking for some serious identity he probably don't know his father was, but his, he has a mother. Like, he has parents, probably siblings. And he's living his life like that. Bold enough to work at a restaurant like that. And that just tells me, man, we are so absent of authority. Amen. It shouldn't even be a question. Son, it's haircut time. Especially when you have more than one boy, they just all start lining up, don't they? Yep. Ain't nobody asking no questions. Corey, ain't they gonna all just line up? Just line up. When they hear, they just get just form an orderly line, right? Right, Julian? Form an orderly line. We cut in hair. Because the Bible says that nature teaches us that men have short hair, women have long hair. That's in the Bible. We believe the Bible. Line up! Amen. And we got guys here that can cut if, you, if you're not good at it. I cut Landon's hair maybe once and he became the talk of the school. <laughs> I said, I'm not going to do you like that again. So we start hiring somebody. But you have to set that standard with authority. It ain't no question, brother. No, you ain't slinging hair in my house. have to clap but that's authority just like the young girl you ain't you ain't wearing that out of my house so practice in the house wearing stuff you can wear out of the house i don't want you to even get comfortable in the house so 
said, you can't wear that. You'll jiggle out of it. But you gotta, this has to be authority and order. And even in this church, in any church, there has to be order. Or the homosexuals will take a church over if the order don't stand up. All the musicians will be moonlighting in the club if order don't stop it. All the women will take turns preaching sermons to each other if order don't stop it. Amen. We have order in this church. My wife told me some ladies in here trying to rebuke other ladies. You can't do that in here. That ain't your position. We have women to do that. And even those women talk to my wife first. Because we don't know everybody's situation. You can encourage and admonish and give them scripture. You can do all of that. But we ain't rebuking and calling nobody out in here. That's not your place. Amen. But it takes order. See, the order has to stay. I told the Lord, I said, look at all these people, Jesus. He said, keep preaching the order. No matter how many folks is here, we'll just keep preaching the order. Same order when it was 20. Same order when it was 50. 800, same order. Order around the corner. Order. It's a certain way you're going to behave in here. If I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God. But listen to this part, the pillar and ground of the truth. So you can't be teaching truth without the pillar and ground of the truth. That's the church. You got to have backup. Told a friend of mine years ago, about six, seven years ago, he was like, man, yeah, man, you know, I watch you. I only watch you. I listen. I said, brother, you don't live here, so you need to find a church home. I said, because you married, you don't went and got a Dominican you know that's mommy water in the waiting. You got to keep prayer and fasting around that. You went and got this girl. I said, brother, you need to get in the church. I will, I will. Call me a few weeks ago. Brother, man, my wife done drill off the deep end. No, she done dove back in the water where you got her. I told you. What am I supposed to do? She Now she calling me out and she believed a Hebrew Israelite doctrine and all this and that. I said, brother, you in trouble. You didn't have no backup. You can't keep quoting scriptures and junk to her if you don't have an authority backing you up. I told him, that's like two folks in a car accident and they on the street corner just arguing each other down. And they're going to keep doing that until an authority shows up. An authority has to show up. Then when they go to court, they ain't going to let y'all just hash it out in court. There has to be an authority in that. Somebody to preside over it. That's the way it works in human life. Teacher act up in school. You got to have a principal there as an authority. Principal act up. Superintendent of the school got to step in. Why? Because he's an authority. It's like that on your job. So you need an authority to back up your authority in your house. Man, I'm preaching without slides. I, boy, amen. I'm sick of these folks trying to, I'm, you know, they just want to drive by pastor. I can't do that. You need authority. Okay, let me get to this bullet. One of the things that the devil hates most about the church is God's order in the church. God does things decently and in order because he is order. Some of y'all need to go back to the creation series, the creator series. When I talked about who God really is and his authority, those things, that'll bless you. When you are supreme, how many know God is supreme? When you are supreme first and created from nothing but the creator of everything, then you are established order. Yes, right, sir. Yes. 
Let me say that again. When you're supreme and first, created from nothing, but you created everything, you're established order. God is order. He's established order. He's the manufacturer, so he decides how his product should operate. Because he's the manufacturer. Amen? You manufactured your kids, so you decide how they need to behave in your house. Amen. I manufactured you. I, I recall it. Recall that tale. Don't you? <laughs> Amen. That's your house. Now, when they grown, that's one thing. But in my house, I'm established order. I thought some men would have clapped on that, but some of them sitting next to women that beg to differ. Just keep on going past them. <laughs> but John 1 and 3, all things were made by him, and without him was not what? Anything made that was made. So what nothing made that was made without him? Because he made everything. He said in one passage, I made evil. And he said that to just mess with you. Because <laughs> you, your mind can't understand that level of authority. Ask the devil who he got to answer to. And you'll understand what he said. He said, I made evil. That means evil got to answer to me. So he said, well, remove the cover away from Job. Okay, I'll remove it. I'll let you test him, but don't touch his life. And what the devil do? He ain't touch his life. Because God made him. Amen. When God does it or says it, it is law and order. Whatever he says and does becomes the way to say and do it. Yeah, whatever he says and does, it becomes the way to say and do it. Because he's order. He is his word, and his words are our order. John 1 and 1 in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word what? Was God. Well, this is good to me. In like manner, when God created each of us, he fit us in an order that would carry forth his plan for us. So he didn't just make us, but he fit us in an order. When we welcome him in our lives, he presides over our lives and fits us in an order. That's why praying can't just be I prayed. It has to be perpetual. You got to keep praying because while you're praying, you're being fit into an order. See, God don't drop the world for your prayer. God makes your prayer fit in the world he's operating through. So in order to bring that to pass, he's got to go six, seven, sometimes ten steps ahead of you, make something else happen to welcome the way you're trying to go through your prayer. That's why you, that's why you can't, look at somebody and say, you can't stop praying. Don't come to me talking about, I've been praying. Well, keep praying. I've been waiting. Keep waiting. Because some other things are being moved around by his sovereignty just because you prayed. He fits us in an order. He fits us. The devil fights to get us out of order so we will live our lives searching for answers, paths, validations, and approvals. Ain't it funny how the African-American community, shortly after slavery, were the ones that were pushing Christianity, believing in the Bible, and trusting in it. Now they done welcomed all this African stuff. The nigglets and the statues and the mommy water seashells and old paintings and just old gods, old demon gods that have cursed the whole continent. Folks in Africa are telling me, they say our continent is cursed. Why is America trying to bring this curse over there? Got a whole bunch of folks that were former 
Yoruba priest and priestess children. And they said we watched our parents die under the curse of Yoruba. And we're denouncing it over here and fighting against it. They said we got to stay fasting and praying to fight against it. And America is welcoming it. Through the music. Through the music. When they can't even talk, they can beat drums. Music. You're going to let your musical artist send you to hell. You're going to let your favorite actor send you to hell. Did you show that clip this morning? J. Bryan showed a clip of the dude from Snowfall. Uh, Elba, what's his name? Idris? Yeah. Talking about he got in the corner saying, devil, 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 to call him forth the devil so he could do his scene in Snowfall to entertain you. So he done called on the devil, and the devil done made the show good so you will enjoy it. Yeah. In this last season, um, I was hitting a block, right? I, I was like, oh, I'm not doing it right, right? So I went in the corner, and then I was looking at the wall, and I was like, come on, devil, come on, devil, right? Mm -hmm. Get, come to me, like, come to me, because I had to do something, like, crazy, right? Had nightmares for a month. Mm -hmm. So it does you come... After it or after? After. Like, after? like, I had nightmares every day. Like, I just felt, I felt that energy. Oh, interesting. You know, and I had to pray and do all this stuff to, like, get rid of it and... You know, you call your mom up and you're like, bring me back to life. And <laughs> that stuff is real. That stuff really is real. We ain't even, you know, we ain't paying attention to this stuff no more because, you know, God has given us freedom and liberty to watch what we want to watch. We'll listen to what we want to listen to. We'll, you know, we'll just, you know, dibble dabble here, a little here, here. No, no, the devil's in the details. And he's got your number. Look at your life. I promise you, your life reflects it. I promise you. I promise you, you ain't getting what you're asking God for. Come on. Yes, sir. I know you're not. Yes, sir. Can I keep going? Yeah, you can't watch everything. Yeah. I mean, I just, in season after season, you watching all these seasons? You can't watch everything. You can't, look at somebody and say, you can't watch everything. You can't watch everything. Devil's in some of this stuff to ruin your life. You don't have to listen to me. Listen to your life. Ask your life. Ask your prayers. Ask your happiness and your joy. Next, ask the weed you keep hitting. Ask the blunt you secretly smoking. Ask the sin you think nobody know about and act, tell me if this stuff is good for you to keep watching I know I'm preaching yeah man some stuff I know I ain't seen it brother you ain't seen it no no I'm gonna keep preaching and whoever will listen will be blessed elder I promise you, you'll be blessed. You'll be blessed. You'll have blessings on top of blessings if you pay attention. Oh, the hand claps, thin and out. They thin and out because you're messing with folks' music. You're messing with their shows. You're messing with their fun, fun, fun. But at what expense? What is the fun costing your life? Look up, 10 years done pass. You ain't moved an inch. So you're searching for paths and validations. That's how they get into this new age stuff. Paths, validations, and approval from everything. Just looking for all of this stuff. Because the devil got you out of order. God put an authority in your life for a reason. But you're out of order. So now you're searching for that authority. You're searching for answers somewhere else. But we must get all of these things, paths, validations, and approval from the Father of lights. He said he will light your pathway. 
Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my what? Pathway. He's the father of lights. He will light up that darkness. You'll find yourself getting darker and darker in your thinking and behavior. Because you're moving further and further away from the father of lights. James 1 and 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the what? Father of lights with whom is no variable, neither shadow. Ain't no darkness in him. And he ain't turning or changing. The devil hates the order of God because it was the order, it was this order that removed him from his position and the presence of God. That's why the devil hates and wants to keep fighting order. Because order kicked him out. He messed with the order, got kicked. Like my daddy said, kicked. Got kicked out. Messing with the order. So he hate order now. He got removed from his position in the presence of God. Even today, so many have started ministries to avoid the godly authority that disapproved of their plans. Brother, you don't need to be preaching. Oh, well, I'm called. And I'm... Brother, you don't need to be preaching. And sometimes it ain't because you can't preach. Sometimes you need to focus on your family. Sometimes you need to focus on your marriage. Sometimes you need to focus on your B-I-L-L-S bills. Quit preaching and work. Even today, so many have started ministry. I read that. They were not allowed to do what they wanted in churches. So they rebelled and started their own. We got a bunch of churches now. Amen. This is exactly what Lucifer did in heaven. You know what? I can't flourish up here, so I'm going to go start my ministry in earth. I'll become God of this world yeah. Yeah. Isaiah 14 and 14 I will ascend above the heights of the cloud I will be like the most high yeah right no you won't the majority of people that left churches this way are simply at home scrolling through the internet to find messages that fit their feelings so you don't have nobody to govern you so you'll start watching some of the right stuff, whatever, then over time, you'll start catering more and more to what you feel you need. <laughs> See, when you come in here, you don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> Tell them, man, that, you, don't, you don't know what I'm going to say. You don't know what the sermon's going to be. You have no clue. And that's where it's supposed to be. Remember? Amen. Yeah, it's supposed to be like that because you're supposed to depend on God. To speak to you if you have elected this church to be the source of it. So I'm going to depend on God to speak. I'm not going to look for what I think I need. Man, when you was in the world and looked for what you thought you need, how did that work out for you? How did that work out for you? My goodness, we don't know what we need. Yeah, so you're just scrolling, patting your emotions, judging yourself on a curve, giving yourself passes. When you need to be on an authority that's going to challenge you to be better. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Working out in the gym the other day. And you know, I don't know if Kelly's here, but I give him a hard time. Every time he asks me to do something, I'd be like, Kelly! I got to preach. But I told him the other day, when I come in, when I, I went in there by myself one time, went home and felt like I hadn't done nothing, J. Brian. <laughs> Wasn't not a muscle sore, had all my sweat. I wasn't even musty. I hadn't done nothing. I was, I was working out. That's why you got to have a trainer. Ain't that right, Landon? Because the trainer is going to be like, do it again. But if he wasn't there, you'd be like, I ain't doing it again. Why would I keep doing that? That's heavy. Right? The trainer's like, no, you got to do it again. And then the trainer does this. 
You got another one in you. There's another one in there. You be like, nah, nah. Ain't no another one. Yes, it is. <laughs> There's another one in there, and then you push that one out. Am I right, Dev? Dev? If you didn't have anybody over you, you'd have took the easy way out. Yeah, but you wouldn't have had any growth. No growth. Wouldn't be any stronger. Basically, no benefit without somebody getting in your face and saying, you can do this. Well, that's what the pastor is for. That's why you need an authority to tell you, no, Jeff, you got a, you got more than that, did you? There's more to you than that, Jay Bryant. There's more, Julian. There's more. They're not going to let you settle and say, hey, I'm good. No. But you just sit at home, scrolling through the internet, finding the message that fits your feelings. All the while missing important ordinances that come with the fellowship. Important ordinances that come with the fellowship. Hebrews tells you, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as ye see the day approaching. So we don't forsake the fellowship. Why? Because not only are we getting fellowship one to another, but there are important ordinances that are carried out by the fellowship. And when God sees the fellowship coming together, it blesses him. Because he left the church. And Jesus said the gates of hell will not win against the church. In other words, when Lucifer thought, I mean Satan thought he had it good, I'm going to go be the God of this world. And he had a couple of thousands of years, maybe two, three, four, maybe, three and then Jesus showed up. Uh-oh, plans got to change. I thought I was a God of this world. Well, sorry. Jesus said, I'm, not only am I going to overcome the world, but I'm going to leave my church to represent me in the world. So you're no longer the God of this world, devil. At least you don't have the authority you used to have because now the authority is in the church. Jesus left his authority in the church. The ordinances that were given to the New Testament church are important to God and should not be ignored or downplayed. Sure, you can attempt to do them on your own, but God created the fellowship of believers for a reason. You ought to get tired of gathering the kids around the tub and baptizing. Bluetooth speaker playing and you just <laughs> Yeah, singing take me to the water from the living room to the bathroom. <laughs> Can't get the first sentence of the song because she's there. <laughs> take me to the water, you at the water. You need <laughs> you need another song. Yeah, just trying to do it <laughs> to avoid the church because you're church bitter. Because you couldn't sing your solo. They wouldn't let you. You sent a hundred notes up that you wrote. Let sister so-and-so sing her solo. And they wouldn't let you sing. So now you got a problem with the church. Then you start your own. You singing all the time, but don't nobody come. Now you see why they wouldn't let you sing. <laughs> You're not good at it. Thank God I tell you that. I will. Do something else.
The ordinance that were given to the New Testament church are important to God and should not be ignored or downplayed. Sure, you can attempt to do them on your own, but God created the fellowship of believers for a reason. He prescribed his ordinances to be carried out and presided over by men that he chose and anointed to do it. You gonna skip this part? 1 Timothy 4 and 14, neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy. But how by prophecy was it given? With the laying on of the hands of what? The ministry. Those that are called laid hands on you and put the gift in you. You don't lay hands on yourself in the bedroom and put it in. I put the gift of voice singing. I, I trying to touch your own vocal cords. There's order. Look at somebody and say, God has order. Man, man, man. First ordinance, water baptism. Well, we baptize on our own. Keep doing that. If that's what you want to do to avoid the presbytery. But I'm going to do what the scriptures say. I'm going to get where folks are called by God to do stuff. Water baptism is not required to enter into heaven or be saved. But it is commanded that we baptize those that are born again for the weighty spiritual symbolism that occurs with submersion. Many argue that you cannot be saved without it, but they cannot explain the account of the thief on the cross. Either way, it's an ordinance of God and should be done by all that come to Christ. Amen. They couldn't get off the cross to baptize, old boy. So Jesus said, we'll just skip it. Yes. There ain't always water. You may get saved on a ra- in the desert. Can't baptize you in sand. It's not the same effect. Just still saved. And if Jesus come, you're going to go back with him. You don't think he'd look and see? There was no water. You all right. No, we do not baptize to be saved, but we baptize because we are saved. We need to stop looking to put people in hell because of what they didn't do and just try to get them to heaven by what they should, what should be done. Can we do that? That's what Jesus did. He didn't look at what the man hadn't done. He said, man, let me just get you in. Because that's what's important. If you believe. When we take this attitude, we will win more and condemn less. Some folks too save. Acts 2 and 38. Then Peter said unto them, repent, be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of The Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Tithes and offering. This is an ordinance. Giving. Most members that leave churches discontinue their giving or they give sparingly because they aren't fully committed to the ministry. This affects your life. The word tells us that where our heart is, our treasure will be also. This means that we will give and support what we love. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I done got rebuked so much because I put the little mommy water clip online and boy, where can I get the rest of the video? Well, the video is not on YouTube. Oh, so you charging for it? Yes. I mean, everything. See, YouTube, it ain't free when it's on YouTube. That's why they're running commercials. That's why we don't have commercials because I channel and monetize. They won't let me upload. I had to cut something out of the mommy water clip, the audio out of a part of that just so it would be uploadable. Right. Nobody want to see that version of the Truth Behind Hip Hop where everything is cut out. So and we ain't never put it up there and we're not gonna. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. God don't own YouTube. That's But these are folks that don't give. Worried about that. This means that we give 
And we support what we love. The devil has caused many to hate the church, hate authority, and hate the people that hurt them. This hatred provokes them to become stingy with their giving and hurt their own blessings. Many want to throw out tithes and offerings for this reason or that reason. But the bottom line is that Jesus watched the whole offering and never stopped it. He sat there and watched an entire offering taking place. And he didn't say, oh, stop. We don't do offerings. No. He watched the whole offering. He presided over it in observation and came away with the story of the poor widow. Yes, sir. But he didn't stop the offering. If there was something wrong with it, would he have stopped it? If he didn't want an offering, would he have stopped it? If offerings weren't right in his eyes, he would have stopped it altogether. Giving is an ordinance and blesses us when we do it with the right heart. Amen. 2 Corinthians 9 and 12. Um, for the administration of this service not only supplied the one of the saints, but is abundant also by making thanksgivings unto God. And communion, which is the Lord's Supper, depending on what uh, denomination you're from, you call it the Lord's Supper or communion. Taking the Lord's Supper is an ordinance from the... For the church to do when they come together, there are no specific times to carry out this ordinance. But the, some churches do it on first Sunday. Some do it once or whatever, whatever. There's no specifics given when to do it. But the Bible just says, as often as you do it. This is a decree of God in remembrance of the Savior's death, bur burial, and resurrection. It joins us with him symbolically, putting him inside of us as we partake of it. This requires us to be in the right mind and have a clean, repentant heart toward God and most importantly, others. All oh, the others. All oh, the others. We make sure that we are worthy because we have repented of our sins and believe that Jesus is alive in us. Because of the sacrifice of laying down his life for us, we must be in good standing with our brothers and sisters. Uh-oh. Yeah, this is where they was going wrong. The Lord's Supper was brought up in the passage because of the divisions of the believers in Corinth. That's how he started the whole passage. Y'all coming together and y'all not getting along? Y'all coming together and y'all fighting each other? And some of y'all are teaching heresy and foolish doctrine? And you're going to try to take the communion? Yeah, some of them was reveling, getting drunk. Some of them was just hungry and wanted to eat. He's like, y'all messing this up. Some of y'all going to die. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Many are sick and some die because they did not take this ordinance as seriously as they should. What Jesus did for us is sacred and should never be taken lightly. 1 Corinthians 11 and 27. So then whosoever eats this bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in a way that is unworthy of him will be guilty of profaning and sinning against the body and blood of our Lord, of the Lord. Summary. Man, this was a good message, boy. Amen. Amen. All right. Ordinance is derived from the word order. Order pleases God. Look at somebody and say, order pleases God. Order. Yes, order pleases God. If you married, if you're a woman, your husband is the head. You treated him like the head of your marriage, pleases God. Yes. You don't have to clap. Don't change how God feels. Amen. You treat your wife as the weaker vessel, you honor her as a weaker vessel. That means you can't dump certain things on her. That means you can't dump certain responsibilities on her. You honor her. That pleases God. Because that's his order. I'm preaching it. Man, look, you can look at me mad if you want to. Ooh, that don't change nothing. It's God's order for us to come together as a fellowship of believers. It's God, God's order for us to be presided over by a spiritual authority. 
It's God's order for us to be baptized. It's God's order for us to be presided over by a spiritual authority. Y'all believe that? I mean, that's just, that's God's order. That's, a, that's all in the Old Testament. Bible said Moses couldn't do the duties he needed to do. God told him, said, go get 70 elders. Yeah. 70 elders. Ask me how many of the 70 elders were female. And that ought to tell you absolutely everything. That preaches all by itself. 70? Now the 12, okay, that was 12. 70? And how many women? Somebody, but Deborah, my Deborah wasn't born yet. <laughs> hey, boy, they would drag Deborah. They would drag Deborah's bones in here if they could get to them and put a clergy collar around her. Yeah. And Deborah was a female. <laughs> And the Bible said the spirit of the Lord came on a whole bunch of the judges. But it never said the spirit of the Lord came on Deborah. She took it upon herself to judge Israel. Then mocked the man that was supposed to be in charge. Don't get me going. Dang. Let me go. Let me finish. It's God's order for us to come. And I don't have nothing against women. I love all y'all. Man, I got one right here. Why would I have something against women and I got one? She don't want to be in charge? No, sir. Why would she want to be in charge? That's some good sleep when you're not in charge. I look over at her sometime and I just want to wake her up. Seventh heaven, eighth heaven, ninth heaven, tenth heaven. She just going up in her sleep. Man. But it's God's order for us to come together. It's God's order for us to be presided over. And it's God's order for us to be baptized when we believe. It's God's order for us to give offerings to the fellowship that we are connected to. It's God's order for us to take the Lord's Supper when we come together as well. All of these are his ordinances because he desires them to be done. We cannot allow our church hurt, anger, resentment, and bitterness to make us avoid fellowship. When we avoid the fellowship of the saints, we are missing the ordinances being carried out by proper authorities. God has called certain men to lead and instruct the body. God has called certain men to rightly divide his word and teach his people. When we are offended, we cause ourselves or others to forsake fellowship, to avoid trusting in those that do not agree or those that will teach us to forgive. So you're avoiding people that don't agree or that will teach you to go fix stuff. Many are searching the internet for a word, scrolling for approval or joining with a sedition that lines up with their feelings because they were hurt by the church they attended. We can't allow the devil to have it that easy. Amen, that's too, look at somebody say, that's too easy. We must repent for using hurt. Listen, we must repent for using hurt to shield us from our own failures and low self-worth. Hurt don't stop a determined person. Hurt don't stop a confident person. We must forgive and get back into the fight. We must partake in the ordinances of God with the fellowship of believers because this is pleasing to God and vital for us in this last hour. 1 Corinthians 11 and 1. Be ye followers of me even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things and do what? Keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. Everyone stand to your feet. 
Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm just going to pray and then we're going to administer the Lord's Supper. But I'm going to pray for everybody so nobody has to come up. But I asked the Lord for this sermon. This is, you know, I got, I just asked him. I said, God, I just need, what, what, what do you say? I didn't want to do the regular one that we normally do for communion or whatever. I just wanted, Lord, give me what to say. And I mean, he just began to speak and I began to type as fast as he was speaking and looked up. I had this entire sermon. I believe God wanted you to hear it. Amen. I do. I believe he wanted you to hear it. I believe he wanted me to hear it. He wanted me to hear it. So it's important that we do these ordinances, especially as a church body, not just fellowshipping, but adding the ordinances to our fellowship as well. Amen. Amen. Everyone just bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for adamant believers counsel. God, in other places, other states, other countries, other continents, many don't have the opportunity to have a place or go to a place quite like this. They aren't able to come together and hear the full truth of the word or, God, there may be politics involved or there may be money involved or just whatever the case. And it's hard, Lord, to find a place like this. So first, we want to just thank you for a place like this. God, we thank you. Thank you for your leading. Thank you for your guiding. Thank you for your planting. Thank you, Father God, for the steadfastness. Even when it got hard and we wanted to leave, even when our, the, the message just made us upset, when it hurt us, hurt our feelings, hurt us what we thought we were going to do, we ended up not doing whatever the case, but we stuck it out. We stayed planted like that tree. And God, your living water of your word has been nourishing us ever since. So we thank you, Lord, for this place. Thank you for a place, a place where our children can grow together with other children of like mind in safety. Thank you for homeschool where they can come together and even be schooled together and learn together. Father God, and grow up together. Thank you for the many marriages, 30 plus marriages in this fellowship just because of the fellowship. Thank you, Father God, for all of the things that a fellowship provides. And God, we just thank you for placing us here. And we pray right now, Father God, for others that are searching, that are looking. Father God, that you would lead them to a good place of fellowship. Father God, those that are even watching this video, we pray for them wherever they are, whatever continent they're on, whatever state they're in, whatever county they live in. It, wherever they are, God, lead them to a fellowship. Help them find what they need in the area that they're in, Father God. And we ask, Father God, that you would grace them with a place, Lord, so that they can fulfill ordinances and fellowships and all the wonderful things that we are responsible for in this last hour. So, Father, we pray for them right now. And, Father God, we pray, Lord God, that as we administer even this Lord's Supper today, that we will keep a keep remembrance of you Lord and what you've done for us and how it is because of you that we are here and it is because of what you've done Father God that we have salvation we thank you Lord in Jesus name we pray Amen Amen You may be seated <laughs>